Hey everyone. Among all the different apparitions of our Lord after the resurrection, perhaps the most well-known and the most emblematic, the most beautiful even, is that of his encounter between with Mary of Magdala. It's sometimes called the most beautiful recognition scene in all of literature. Mary, whose heart is just so fixed upon our Lord, she is consumed with a desire for him, she just is her, the only thing she can think about is Jesus, and then there she finally meets him. She finally finds the one whom she thought she had lost, the one who she had seen die less than 48 hours earlier. He's here with her again. And in this encounter scene, which it doesn't say explicitly in scripture, but it's supposed that she then grabs him. She, she lunges towards him. She wants to be close to him. She wants to be close to the one she loves. That's natural. But then there's this very confusing reaction on the part of Jesus. He says, do not touch me, for I have not yet ascended to my father. Why does he push Mary away? You know, that doesn't seem to be the way that Jesus normally acts. It doesn't seem to be the way we expect him to act either. You know, in the scriptures, we see him always bringing people close to him. For example, he rebukes the disciples who try and keep the children away from him. He says, no, let them come to me. And he, he blesses them. The crowd is pressing upon him. He himself said, come to me, all of you who are labor and burdened. So why did he say, don't touch me? You know, it's not as if they had social distancing going on back then. After, with other people after the resurrection, he, he wants them to touch him. He invites Thomas the doubter to touch him. He invites the other disciples to touch him as well to confirm that he really does have a true body. So why not Mary? Why not Mary of Magdala? And scripture scholars have really wrestled with this for a long time. They say maybe it was a typo by somebody who was copying the original and Jesus actually said something else. He said, do not be afraid, Mary. Or perhaps it's a situation where with this particular verse, he was saying, don't be attached to me physically. You know, you must have faith, so don't rely so much upon the tangible realities. But the most probable explanation is that when our Lord said, do not touch me, he wasn't saying don't touch me at all. He was saying rather, do not hold on to me. Because the Greek word for touch there is in the present imperative. So more properly translated, it's do not clutch on to me. Do not continue holding on to me. Do not maintain that grasp upon me. So he wasn't casting her off, but he was saying, all right, now it is time to go. I have work to do. I have little time here on earth before I send to my father. And I need to talk to my apostles. So go tell them that I'm going before them into Galilee. And what we can perhaps take away from this prohibition, this command of our Lord, is that we need to go to him in prayer. We need to spend time with him. We need to be present to him directly in spiritual activities. But we are going to have to let go of him and then go to work. Then go bring the good news of the resurrection to other people. We see this in the Transfiguration where the disciples wanted to stay at the top of the mountain of the Transfiguration. But Jesus said, no, we cannot build tents up here. We have to go back down to the valley and we have to work. And so too with us. After we've had that encounter with our risen Lord, we then need to go and we need to bring that good news to other people.